I've been crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me We welcome you today to our Bible study on the Apostles Doctrine of Eschatology Today our subject is the parables of Jesus. Jesus taught many things. He told many parables. There are probably over 40 parables that illustrate. They're all eschatological, meaning that they all have to do with Israel's last days. The word parable found in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, number 3942, is called paramia. And it means a parable was a fictitious illustration. Another word, paraboli in Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, number 3850, again, a fictitious narrative of common life conveying a moral. For example, the moral of the story simply meant what the lessons were teaching. The parables were earthly stories with heavenly meanings physical words that denoted spiritual realities. Jesus said in Matthew 13 and 3, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 45, And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. Many things that Jesus said by teaching the parables, he spoke directly to the people of his day, and many times this included the scribes and the Pharisees. In Psalms chapter 78 and verse 2, the scripture said this, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Why the parables? To properly answer why Jesus told the parables, we must see them in their proper context. A contextual consistency is what we desire, meaning we look on all the things, all the scriptures that deal with any particular issue or subject. There are many contextual inconsistencies that are taught in churches today. They simply are just bits and pieces, fragmentations of scripture. But to get contextual consistency, we must look at everything the scriptures say about any subject. Jesus was a servant to the circumcision to confirm the promises of God to the old covenant fathers of Israel. Notice in Romans chapter 15 and verse 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. He came to confirm the things that were promised to Old Covenant Israel. In Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said He came to fulfill the law. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus was a Jew. He came to the Jews. In John 4, 22, he said this, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So says Matthew 15 and 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in Matthew chapter 10 verse 5 and 6, the scripture said this, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and, to, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus was sent with a mission to the children of Israel. Any view of the parables that ignores or denies this context is misguided. It should be clear that the parables serve as a source for the epistles, the message in the epistles. This means, therefore, that the epistles are concerned with the story of Israel's salvation. 
It means that they are also concerned with the message of Israel's judgment. It means that they also are concerned with the message of the end of Israel's covenant age. The parables nor epistles are concerned with the end of time or the end of the Christian age. Why the parables? The parables were to instruct concerning the nature of the kingdom of God anticipated by Israel. The kingdom of heaven is like, was often said. Number two, the parables were to reveal the truth to Jesus' disciples in Matthew 13 and 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. In Matthew 13 and verse 35, the scripture said this, That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Things that had been kept secret since the foundation of the world were now being revealed. In Romans chapter 16 and verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. The parables were to enrage the unbelieving, to set the stage for the death of Jesus. They understood many times that he spoke about them in his parables. The parables were to warn his audience of the impending judgment that the kingdom would be taken from them and the master sent forth his armies to destroy their city and their temple. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 7. And when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. The parables not only tell the story of Israel and her salvation, the parables give us the template for understanding the gospel message of Jesus Christ. It is lamentably true that in many commentaries, the gospel parables are divorced from the epistles, as if the message of the parables was somehow different from the message of the gospel, but nothing could be further from the truth. Notice, Jesus taught the parables to reveal the mystery. Paul's gospel was to reveal the mystery, as it said in Romans 16, and in Ephesians chapter 3. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. These mysteries were hidden in previous ages. And Paul said they were unknown. They were hidden in previous ages. But in Matthew 13 and 17, the time had come. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. In Romans chapter 16, verse 25 and 26, the Apostle Paul said that these things have been now revealed. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. The mystery simply being that Jew and Gentile were to become one. 
In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 2 through 6, the scripture said this, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The parables were to reveal the nature of the kingdom, the hope of Israel. Paul said in the book of Acts that he preached nothing but the hope of Israel in Acts chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Now this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I, the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. And in Acts chapter 26, verses 6 through 8. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I'm accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? The things that the prophets wrote about in the Old Testament, they desired to see what they were seeing in the first century Israel. Matthew chapter 13, verse 17. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear these things which ye hear, and have not heard them. In Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 and 34, it was the time of harvest. Hear another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard, and hedged it round about, and digged a winepress in it, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen, that they might receive the fruits of it. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 4, notice the time of the wedding feast. All things were made ready. The invitation was to come to the feast. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. And in Matthew 25 and verse 10, the statement was made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, the time was at hand. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Many of the parables speak about the parousia. They go back to Hosea chapter 5, where God abandoned Israel and would return in judgment and salvation. In Hosea chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, the scripture said this, for the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without teraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return, and seek the Lord their God, and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. 
in the latter days, that was the last days, the last days generation of the old covenant that God had with the 12 tribes of Israel. His return was now, and it was near in Messiah in the first century. The parables are Israel's story. There are several dominant ideas and central themes found in the parables. For example, the last days, the absent master, the return of the master, the story of the wedding, the great banquet, the establishment of the kingdom. It seems to have escaped the notice of many, if not most commentators, that every one of these elements is part of Israel's last day's hope. And one single Old Testament book illustrates this truth, and that is the book of Hosea. All of the parables are eschatological, meaning that they are all involved with Israel's last days the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the judgment of God against covenant breakers. The parables were to reveal things that were previously predicted, but never understood. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 17, we read before in verse 34 and 35, notice what the scripture said. And these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the, from the foundation of the world. Notice what it said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 6 through 11. Howbeit, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. These things come by way of revelation. Notice 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10, 11, and 12. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things, which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost set down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Things that were now being revealed, things that had been hidden, this is a critical point of understanding. These things once hidden were things that were now present. The parables told the story of Israel in veiled form. They revealed that the time had come. Messiah had arrived. They revealed the truth to the discerning and concealed the truth from the undiscerning. They set the stage for Jesus' atoning death and the removal of the old covenant shadow to reveal the new covenant kingdom. Jesus came and revealed the nature of the kingdom, the hope of Israel. This is what the Apostle Paul was preaching, nothing but the hope of Israel. The parables not only tell the story of Israel and her salvation, but they give us understanding about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is sad but true that in many commentaries, the parables are often spoken of as if their application 
is to the modern day church in a futuristic setting. Nothing could be further from the truth. All of the parables, they are all eschatological and they speak of the events getting ready to take place in that last day's generation from A.D. 30 to A.D. 70 of the first century. Israel's old covenant relationship came to an end in A.D. 70. All written prophecy having been fulfilled. In conclusion to our Bible lesson on the parables, part one, we've discovered what the parables' purpose was when Jesus came. He did. He used earthly stories to reveal heavenly things. And the physical words that he used were simply denoting spiritual realities that were going to take place in that last day's generation. Any question that you have regarding the parables or any of our Bible lessons, you can contact us, email at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com. Thank you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've